Awesome. Okay, so we are switching gears into some fun stuff. Now, I, I know that there's a little bit of animosity. We're kind of talking a little bit about financials. Let's go to the map, okay? And we're going to talk for just a minute. What is it that's kind of scary about financials? Because we're going to be talking deposits, expenses, banks, receivables, payables, balance sheet items, payroll. All of these things are technically termed back-end office functions, correct? So before we get going, there's a distinction between what's called operations, which is your day-to-day -day activity, and accounting. What in the heck happened? Okay? So um, <laughs> that's, that's a literal term. What in the heck happened? <laughs> okay, so uh, before we start this, what I'm going to propose is that I just showed you a couple of little simple, simple graphics. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was actually jump back into a help file. So any page you're on, go to a help file, and we're going to go to the steps to success. And let's go ahead and go right to the general system settings. It's number three. But what I wanted to do is kind of show you we're leading into accounting and the difference between operations and accounting. There's some cool little graphics here. This is like internal little worlds. Each little world is its own little fenced-in area type thing. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll down. It's kind of showing you like where some of the different little corp-wide settings are found from the map, how we use locations to scale models. But what I was hoping to do is actually get down to some little graphics that kind of show how we actually track your data. Okay? So uh, technically right here, there's an analogy. And Steve came up with this analogy. Imagine water turning into ice. What's the process that it would go through? Okay, it's got to get cold first at some point, okay? So at first, it's pretty loose, right? Then, then what happens? It's got to start crystallizing, congealing. It starts getting a little bit more firm, does it not? <coughs> it's not even ice yet, but it's kind of in that quasi-state. And then eventually, it firms up all the way to ice. This never happens like this. Never. There's a thing called time that needs to happen in this process, okay? So what we do is we help track that time. So when you do your original piece, it's very loosey-goosey, like water, okay? And then slowly it becomes more firm, and eventually ice. This is the little graphic I wanted to show you with, right here, okay? So if we're talking operations versus accounting, we did our first two days completely on operations. Why would we have started there? <coughs> What's that? Data. We got data in. Awesome. What was that? Just to understand the system, the language. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So which comes first, accounting or operations? Okay. Is accounting needed if nothing's happening? Okay. But uh, this, I'm not trying to create a fight here, okay, because some people really take offense by this, but typical standard things that happen right now if you go to an accounting program, guess what the first thing they want you to do? Okay, enter all your accounts. I want to know where everything's going. Da, 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 da. Like you start, you literally are you're painting a picture, and you can do that. But guess what's happening on the other side of the fence? You're busy painting a picture, and they're playing. Okay, you you literally aren't doing that. What Atlas does is it says like this: Why don't we face the same direction? And why don't you do something? And then I'll account for it. Why don't you do something? I'll account for it. Okay. It's literally like the cart and the horse type of a, a scenario, okay? It just doesn't work the other way around. You can, but it kind of forces it into some, some interesting little scenarios. Okay, the next little one that I wanted to show you was... You, you can see accountants that, that really resist. They think the, the, the cart goes first. Co well, I mean, correct. Like you say, yes, you correct, that. correct. Okay, so here's what ends up happening. How many of you guys are familiar with Henry Ford and the assembly line? Okay. What happened, Deb, what can you tell me about the assembly line? What happened? Well, I just know that he kind of created his own little world. And then Ford did, and then he had to, I mean, he created everything. Well, exactly what the people were supposed to do, how they were supposed to do it. And it was very It's a slow detailed. movement through time. Okay, we're moving through time. Awesome. And they were doing different little objects, okay? So here's what they were doing. Wow, we're going to need some bodies and some frames and some tires. And you guys do this, and you guys do this, and you guys do this. So they started distributing. Instead of having one person building the whole car from top to bottom, top to bottom, 
they said, you guys just do frames, you guys just do paint, you guys just do windshields, or whatever it might have been, okay? We created this assembly line process. It moves an object through time, and it was awesome. It was revolutionary, revolutionary. So what happened when Toyota came online? What happened there? Toyota said, oh my goodness, what a great process. But guess what? I am not going to make 2,000 frames and 2,000 windshields and 2,000 this. I am looking to make about five things today. I just need five, five, five. So all of a sudden, they didn't have to have all these warehouses and this huge thing. They did a thing called just-in-time manufacturing, okay? So it takes a little bit more coordination, but at the same point, if something goes wrong with those 2,000 things that they have stockpiled to forward, guess what ends up happening? <laughs> you bite the bullet, okay? That's a huge stockpile and a huge piece that you can no longer use. So all of a sudden, this just-in-time stuff starts playing into the, to the picture. And what we do is we, very, we do the same exact thing, imagine a process, and we start saying like this, you guys have this permission, you're going to play at this level, I only want you to play at this, as soon as you're ready, pass it on. It'll stay here until the next person says, okay, I'll let it pass, I'll let it pass, okay? We enter once, and we start using many, okay? And we divide it by permission, and we run it over time, and this is how we do accounting. So this little, I want to just kind of talk briefly about this little uh, diagram right here. This is another one of Steve's ideas. Steve is an entrepreneur, okay? He's had multiple different businesses, transportation and retail and log cutting and trailers and you name it, you name it, you name it, okay? Definitely an entrepreneur. What he did is he's like, oh my goodness, what if we were able to start separating things together so that we could actually bring it up so that it would work? Because currently... Let me show you what the current value looks like. It looks like this. Okay? We have operations, we have accounting, and there's this gigando gap in between what actually happens. Okay? So what we want to do is actually kind of show you how that we can start bringing this gap up together from the bottom. So guess where we start? Operations. Okay? I've got something. I want to sell something. I did something. Eventually, we'll figure out, okay, who owes me and who do I owe? That's accounting, okay? But we start at the operation level, we enter it, and then we start using it. Slowly, we start tracking it. So it's literally a complete mind shift. It's as much as a mind shift as the assembly line was to the American or any industry as the way that we're attacking uh, um, accounting, okay? Take it from the bottom. Where did it start? Guess what? Every single thing has a life cycle. Can you name something that does not have a life cycle? Okay, everything does. And part of the life cycle is time. Part of the life cycle is different states and statuses. And we track that. And all of a sudden, I can now tell stories. I can now tell all kinds of things because I'm tracking things over time. Okay, so literally it's, it's like a paradigm shift. Okay, but if you can think of it as an assembly line of your stuff, you're really not going to be going like this. Sweet, we're going to start this process. <clears throat> okay, now I have to divide this into the different little things. Well, guess what? We're going to keep running it until it's the end of its life cycle. If it's not done, then it probably needs to be roll called or asked where it's at at a certain spot, and we can virtually go back in time. Okay, I'm see, gonna... I can see how a, a demo could start with what you're saying right now. Mm -hmm. a, a nice, concise synopsis of how to change the way you do business. Yep, yep, absolutely. I mean, we know that you have operations. We know you have accounting. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, Let's yep. make them go in a line, and you do it all in, not in many steps, but in, in one smooth assembly line. Awesome, awesome. I like how that, that that's, I think, a good way to open Joe, the door. My sister Shannon is going to be recording that idea, okay? <laughs> she's she's on it typing right now. <laughs> You guys can see it. Again, I was typing another yeah, one. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This whole the, the zipper analogy, mm -hmm. um, but, but just saying how you're going to start with your operations and merge it into the accounting, uh, it, it's going to change the way people do business. It's just a better way to do business. And you're not going to get very many arguments, and then you can explain how you can do so many other things with the CRM, and then, then you get into all of them. Sure, the side scope, but that I think is a very good starting point to say, 
because people say, well, what are you doing? Well, first of all, you want to understand what their business is about. Ask them that Santiago's good about that. You need to understand what they are. And then you say, well, we have this idea. Mm -hmm. We're going to merge your operations with your accounting. Awesome. Awesome. I then they're going to go, ding. ding. How are you going to do that? Okay. Awesome. And then you say, here's how we do it. So I'm going to throw a small monkey wrench. I love where you're headed with that. But what if I said, guess what? If you don't want to use the accounting inside of Atlas, you don't have to. Like, like if you buy an accounting package, what do you buy? An accounting package. If you buy a POS package, what do you buy? A POS package. If you buy Atlas, what do you buy? A tool set. What do you want to use? Like, it's, it changes the paradigm sure. there as far as that goes. Like, for instance, the mixing bowl that we, we popped in there and saw 16,000 items, guess what they use Atlas for? Just POS stuff. And then they have a person who comes every night, and they print out a nice little end of day closing Board. thing. And the person does that, and goes home and enters it into QuickBooks because that's how they choose to. Okay, we don't make any fusses or fights. We're like, okay, cool, no problem. But we have other people. So say, for instance, John at Highlands Vineyard at the, at the liquor store. What he does is they run the whole thing just as if it's doing the retail point of sale system. They do the whole thing. His wife Sandy in the back end is doing all the accounting. Da, 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 da. They're stuck. Like, They've taken it to a whole nother level. Right. We play at whatever level you want to play, so we don't have to say, hey, we're coming over, do your accounting. We offer it. <laughs> that's that's how that's the, just a little piece that I wanted to throw with sure. you. Okay. Awesome. We're gonna go to one more analogy, okay? My brother Russell in the back is kinda like, oh, this is interesting, because I'm gonna be using my brother Russell to kind of help me do some of these uh, graphics and animations and some of these different things. This is my daughter Abby, she's twelve years old, and I basically commissioned her. Four bucks an hour, child labor, you know. <laughs> but uh, I was like, Abby, I need a picture of a street, okay? And so what we're going to do is uh, imagine that this is a street. I know you kind of have to stretch a little bit, but a lot of things happen. You have turning and going and moving and all kinds of stuff. Well, guess what's happening inside your, your system? Potentially, you have lots of different users who are doing things, okay? And what we're doing is we're saying, do your job, do your job, do your job, do your job. And then eventually what we do is we kind of say, Okay, do we want to see what happened today? Cool, let's pull out to this level, let's look at this day level. Oh my goodness, I gotta go fix this. We just go all the way down almost into the trunk or driver's seat of the car and we make a change, okay? And we pull back out. And then all of a sudden things are going on. Just today we popped back into Sueño del Mar and also Morningstar and wanted to look at some past data. Guess what we virtually did? This right here. Actually play back the movie. Okay, so things are happening and we're virtually watching and monitoring all these things and then we're like, oh my goodness, what happened three months ago? Uh, looks like he was here and he was here and he was here. We call it roll call accounting because guess what we're asking the objects to do? Where were you? What state? Who approved you? What's your value? Where did you start? Like, we can literally ask these things, these questions. Okay, so I just showed you this little analogy. We played right here just a, a minute ago on this little analogy on plates. So guess what I can do, okay? If it's all date sensitive and I move this stuff across time, guess what I can do? I started an invoice, I tied it to a customer, I have 15 line items, and I got zero payments. Cool, it started its life cycle. Okay, three days later, they came in and wanted to pay. Boop, I had another payment in. Guess what's happening? Time is already going. And all of a sudden, I add another payment, another payment, and finally they pay the whole thing off. Okay, sweet. Let's go ahead and advance that to the, um, its life cycle is kind of done. But in the meantime, time has happened. So uh, I don't have a graphic for this one, but a lot of standard accounting things put things into a calendar. Actually, I do have a, a calendar. Let's go like this. I'm going to go Control Home, and I'm going to go back to the main analyst, and I'm going to open up just a simple calendar. It's a monthly calendar. Actually, it's probably more than a month, but it'll give you the idea. Okay, so let's say July 1, clear down to July 31. This is the standard month, okay? Well, guess what standard accounting tries to do in, in general? You better close out your month, buddy, okay? Well, guess how much water just went underneath the bridge, okay? Have you guys ever heard of this thing called an adjustment? Okay. You do a, a lot of book work. What's an adjustment? Well, if you say uh, you had a return on an invoice or something, at the end of the month you have to adjust 
for that difference in the money that you receive. Okay, so potentially things potentially can get out of whack. They'll just, they just will, okay? But what an adjustment is, oh my goodness, I have to force this thing back into what's called a balance or a balance sheet, okay? So what we propose is instead of saying literally this kind of a gap, saying, oh, something actually happened here on the 18th, but I have to adjust for it clear here on the 31st, we go like this. Why don't you run it into a single day at a time and we'll let you balance per day? Because guess what? We're already catching that. Yours is on the assembly line, okay? Depending on the day. So say that same invoice that say it got paid three days later, started its life cycle, the next day happens, it's still saying, hey, I'm still owed the full, I'm still owed the full, oh, I got paid. Okay, and then it kind of finishes out. See how we can kind of put it into individual days? If you needed to go deeper, what can you do underneath the day? Hours, minutes, seconds? Like, I'm not going to go any deeper than that, but I just wanted to show you that we could actually help you run your business over time. So I'm going to return to one more graphic, and this is kind of just my introduction to some of the accounting, okay? Right here, we're going to talk this. We started, the whole demo was at the universe level. We created one called Denver Training. We then went into Denver Training and said, hey, we're going to be a consulting group. We're going to call our park services. We're going to call our locations areas, and we're going to call, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Our salespeople are going to be called reps. We were at the world level. We went in and created a whole bunch of locations, okay? We ended up coming to the group level. We added tons of little consulting items and labor and parts and different things like this. We've done invoices and quotes and customers and POs and all this kind of stuff. That's at the group level. Each individual piece, invoice 27, invoice 28, invoice 29, invoice 30, etc., etc., etc. Each one of them was holding its own data. We then run the entire thing over time. Like, what it does is it's, instead of it just being an accounting package, it's what's called almost the level of world building. Okay? So we're building these worlds. When we jump into Sueno del Mar, you can almost feel their world. It has their colors, it has their the palapas and the this and the that and the pools and like that's their world. We jump into Morningstar, it's their world. Here's my trailers, here's my vehicles, you know like you almost get a little twang in your voice when you start, you know? <laughs> We're down in Texas now. And <clears throat> I'm teasing you, Dan. I know you're from Texas. I hope you want to care. <laughs> careful, careful. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I want you to almost see that it's almost like this virtual world building type thing. Okay? 